You know, one of the things that YouTube influencers who make videos for people who want to grow their YouTube channel will say is that know the title of your video before you start along with get a thumbnail before you do it too which I never do I always forget but in this case I really don't know what to call this video because it seems the uh, the subject today seems kind of complex it's not one I really want to talk about uh, but I've been sitting on this for a little bit and I and I I've got to get it out because I, I have a feeling this takes place a lot more often than I would care to think about. Uh, so let me start off by saying uh, last Saturday night we watched the UFC, UFC 300. It was a big deal, big card, big names. And we were all excited about it. And although there were many uh, big name fights on there, with a potential $300,000 fight of the night bonus that's that's pretty significant um i was really only excited about one fight in particular and that was the max holloway justin gaethje fight and neither one of these men are slouches they are both apex predators in that sport and i have full confidence in max holloway uh, all day long over almost anybody and it was, uh, it, was pre it was pretty exciting. It was the most epic knockout I've ever seen, not just in UFC history, but in any, any fighting history at all. Well, I mean, some, some people might dispute some Mike Tyson knockouts, and they're pretty spectacular too. But listen to this. If you haven't seen the fight, if you haven't seen the card at all, let me tell you why I say that. And that's because... Um, uh, the, the rounds, in case you don't know, are five minutes apiece. Five minutes is a long time to go at it. And in and, and title fights, there are five, five rounds. So it's 25 minutes of fighting with one minute rest in between each one, between each round. And it was what they call a BMF title. I think it's the first one they've ever done. I believe so, at least. And it means, you'll see it on the screen. Well, Max Holloway established himself as the BMF, and it's going to be an impossible act to follow. I couldn't think, I can't think of a better way for the first fight of that kind of title to go down. Um, they went the full five rounds. He was, he was dicing up Gaethje from the very beginning. And it was, it was just amazing. Max Holloway's training style is very unorthodox. And uh, the way he handles his opponent is extremely unpredictable. And he's so fast. He's just so skilled. He's just a very intelligent fighter. And so is Gaethje. Okay, but uh, it was no match for Holloway that night. Holloway knocked out Gaethje in the fifth round in the very last second. And what was, what was just remarkable about it is that he stood there and he does, Holloway did what he does. You know, at the very end, if it makes, if, it go, if the fight goes the entire distance, he'll stand there, he'll look at his opponent and he'll point down to the center of the cage and as if to say, let's do this right here, right now, lay it all on the line. And he did that and they both swung. They both just gave everything they had with one second left on the clock, bam, he, he, he knocks him out. Gaethje fell to the ground. It looked as if his soul left his body. It was just, he looked dead. It was just crazy, man. And I don't think I've ever seen Gaethje like that. So uh, yeah, it was just incredible, incredible. So anyway, why I say that is because it just makes you realize how Life is a game of wins and losses, just like any other sport. Uh, sometimes we win, sometimes we lose, and it's just something you have to accept. Um, it's not easy when we lose. It's, it's, we're very jubilant when we win. We celebrate. We raise our hands. We, 
if we raise our voices. In fact, that, that night when I watched when we watched that fight, our whole family lost our voice. We were hollering and screaming, just really celebrating in the biggest way possible. And yeah, it was. I we lost our voice. I did. Joe Rogan lost his voice. That was pretty funny. But that's how we respond to victories, or at least the bigger they are, the more we do. And uh, some of the victories are small, some are huge, some losses are, are minor, others are consequential, and they don't feel good. But in sports, at least, you know what you're signing up for. You know that um, you know that somebody has to lose, so you accept it. It's a little bit easier to accept. It doesn't feel good, and if you get too many losses stacked up against your wins, uh, then it needs, there's, there's something wrong. You know there's something wrong. One of the things I've noticed about uh, some of these UFC fights is that the, some of these fighters will bring their children, and, the, and they're very, very small children, and they'll bring them cage side to watch the fight, and I think that's a bad idea. It's devastating for a child to watch their father lose. And in the cases where they win, obviously they're, they're happy about it, but I wouldn't want to see my father lose. And it's just, it's something that it's, it's very hard for the child to deal with. And you might wonder where I'm going with this. Let me, let me, let me elaborate. So last week, I think maybe it was a week and a half ago, I was sitting in my back porch right over here and I heard a helicopter flying overhead. And it seemed like it was really, really close and it wouldn't go away. So I come out here, I stand out here, and I look up in the sky, and he is hovering directly above my house, and the helicopter's facing that direction right there, over the fence. So I look over the fence to see what's going on, and I see nothing happening. But he, stood, he stayed there for about a half an hour. I looked around, and I couldn't tell if it was law enforcement, because it seemed like it was an unmarked helicopter. I've never seen where law enforcement is concerned, I've never seen an unmarked one before. I guess maybe they have them though. Uh, I thought maybe it might have been um, medical because we do have a big retention pond right here where he could land if they needed to, but I didn't hear any sirens. There's no first responders. And then um, I thought, well, maybe it has to do with real estate. There's a lot of development that goes on around here. Maybe they, maybe they has to do it because they do that. They'll get up in helicopters and look around. I didn't know what it was. I dismissed it. I came inside, but he stuck around, he stuck around for a while. Well, I had gone, I started to go off to work and my neighbor across the street, whom I would consider a friend, he, uh, he, he private messaged me and said that earlier in the morning, he was, uh, he was getting ready to leave to go to work and a car was slowly driving by and this car was just, just, it looked demolished. The front end of it was smashed. There was a hole in the windshield about a basketball or bullying size uh, hole in the windshield and there was blood in the car. And he was like, he was leaning out to look to see where he was driving. And he, he drove around the neighborhood. So I asked him, I said, did you, did you contact the sheriff's department? Yes. And, you know, it, 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 you could tell there was something wrong. It was just really weird. And so that's who they were. There was a sheriff's department up there. They were looking for a man who struck and killed a high school student and took off. Now... My son, my 17-year-old son, he still goes, he's still in high school, obviously, and it was a fellow student in his music class. And what had happened was uh, this man lives in our neighborhood, and he took his 18-year-old daughter to school, dropped her off, and I guess he had a little minor fender bender with somebody there. I'm thinking, I don't know if it was there or where it was at, but he, t he took off, he started to take off didn't stick around and when he did that being in a hurry I don't know if he ran a stop sign or exactly how it happened but he struck and killed this boy he came home backed his car into the garage and took off at another vehicle and law enforcement later found him in a, in a mall in a different city and they arrested him now Here's why I say all this, and I mentioned the kids who sit ringside or cage side at the fights, is that uh, we understand the fallout 
at least I hope we do, we understand the fallout of something so devastating. First you have the boy who's, it's, it's, it's horrible that a young person loses their life in such a way. Uh, they should, that they should pass in any form or another is, is horrible, but especially in this way. So you have that, and you have the people who probably witnessed the accident or the crash. And then you have the people who assisted and called, and it's got to be very, very difficult. It'd be something you have to live with forever, right? But then you have the mother of the boy who's going to have to live with this for, for the rest of her life. You might wonder, what about the father? Well, you see the father, the boy's father, died in a similar accident like this four years ago. He was in a convenience store and a car ran through the convenience store and killed him. So now the mother has to cope with both of these. And it's a very unusual set of circumstances. So we feel bad for them. And we, we take great umbrage to the fact that somebody would do something like this, right? A hit and run, how cowardly that is. And we, we have, we reserve the, the most intense vitriol for people like this, right? So on Facebook, our community has a, 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 has a Facebook page and someone let the community know that this is what occurred in the neighborhood. And it wasn't, it was completely innocuous. It was, it was nothing wrong with doing that. It was just to let people know. And then you, but you always get people in your neighborhood who just don't know when to keep their mouth shut, correct? Well, that's what happened, is that um, you get a couple people on there and they have a habit of doing this, but something was said about, uh, we, I don't know if he was, he was one of ours, something to that effect, or maybe it was a question, was he one of ours? And then another person made the comment, he was definitely not one of ours. And that really, it, it kind of really got under my skin. And I'll tell you why. While I can understand, I can understand the feeling behind that. I don't like the separation of an us and them. And it's very easy to do that because we all want to feel righteous, don't we? We all want to clarify what we would have done in a similar situation without having to prove it. We all want to divide the line and we want to find out who's on what side. So it's, it, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And, and we have to remember that this man had an 18 year old daughter that he dropped off at school. How is she supposed to go back to school? She didn't commit the crime. How do you think she feels about this? You might say, well, this guy's a bum. He's a loser. This is something that's very difficult for someone to process in a situation like this. That's going to be very hard for someone to come to terms with. They're not, they're not going to be thinking that in the beginning. It may take a long time. And I don't know if it's even necessary. And so you also have the mother. How is the mother, what is the mother thinking? You know, how, I mean, most households depend on two incomes. She might be thinking, how are we gonna survive now? They'll survive, they'll make it, but it's nevertheless very, very difficult. So we pine for the family that loses their child. But we have to understand the fallout is much greater than that. And that we have to be sensitive to people on both sides. And I know there are a lot of people who, I mean, I'm one of them. I watch these crime shows. I watch Dateline, 2020, 48 Hours, things like that. And, and you have uh, family members who are in denial and they've seen things like this coming. And I get that. Uh, they could have reported something sooner. Maybe the apple doesn't far, fall far from the tree. And when that is clear and we make statements similar to that, it's a little bit different. We still have to be careful. But, you know, it's we don't always have to say something and we can still remain sensitive to the people. You know, it's, it's really important to get all the facts before we unload both barrels. It's 
very important to get all the facts. And you know what? The truth is, you may never get them. So it's better to err on the side of caution and be sensitive to people. Now, I know that this content this morning is a little on the darker side. I sat on this for a while. And all I'm saying that is life is full of wins and losses. And the losses will hit you at a time when you never expected it. And it's going to be very, very difficult to deal with. It'll, it'll, the losses will take a shape and a form in a way that you could have never imagined. And you say, I, I've never asked for this. It was never part of my game. But lo and behold, here you are dealing with it. And some people are in that situation. You may not be, but be careful, be sensitive, be kind. Because you don't know when you're going to be in the throes of something like that. And you, if, even if you never are, it's still good to be loving, even to your enemies. And um, I, just, I just really hate it. I've thought a lot about this, and, I, and I, I'm, I feel really sad for this family. I feel really sad for both families. Because it affects so many different people. And it's going to totally change their way of life from now on. And it'll involve memories that they'll never get rid of. Have you considered that? So let's keep our mouths shut about the us and the them. Let's keep our mouth shut about how holy and righteous we are. And how we would have handled things differently. None of that matters. None of that, mat none of that matters to the people who are actually going through it. So be kind. Be kind. You don't know all the facts, and you probably never will. And I just think it's something very good to remember. It's very upsetting to me. It's actually very upsetting to me. And, uh, yeah, I have a hard time. I really have a hard time with it. So, anyway, I just thought I'd bring this up to you guys and let you know that we all suffer wins and losses, and we need to be... We need to celebrate our wins and, and celebrate along other people who are winning. But when other people are losing, try to put yourself in their shoes and be kind. All right, guys. I thank you for your time. Like this video. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check the notification bell and share this with others. All right. If you want to know what I have in my beard or what I use in my head when I shave, or what kind of blow dryers I use for my beard, check the description down below and I'll have all that information. And maybe I'll be able to save you a little bit of money, but um, that's not the most important thing in this video. Just remember what I said. Ruminate on it. Give me your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. In the meantime, be wise.